Wind, solar, wave, geothermal. These are typically what we think of when we think of renewable energy. But there is another abundant source of renewable energy to power Oregon that is right in our backyard, woody biomass. Biomass is cellulosic material, right? Things that have grown. So this tree is biomass. This grass is also biomass. If we go to a forest management context, when we cut down trees for logging and we take the main part of the tree to the mill, what's left over is forest biomass. We take the same tree that went to the mill, we cut a board out of the middle of it, what's left over, the chips, the shavings, the bark, that's mill residuals, that's also woody biomass. Biomass is used for a number, of, a number of things. The first and main thing that we have a lot of is electrical generation. And that's usually done at sawmills or plywood plants, and we call that cogeneration. The other thing that we use biomass for is for straight heat. So that's thermal uses. We're heating buildings, uh, schools, hospitals, public buildings, airports. And that's a very effective use. We're now up to 20 facilities around the state. And then the last thing is liquid fuels. So we're just developing technology to make liquid fuels. And we already have biodiesel, which is out there on the market, uh, but we don't have biodiesel from wood yet. So what we're working on is cellulosic ethanol and aviation jet fuel from wood. There's an interesting cycle regarding biomass, uh, a story that can be told on forest health, on energy savings, on a reduction of carbon in our environment, uh, with dollar savings to our schools and to our hospitals. It is truly a community-based solution to a problem that we have, we all see in the woods, and that, are, that is unhealthy forests. Biomass is important for Oregon because forests are important for Oregon, right? We have a diverse amount of forests. We have a lot of forests. We have forests on the west side. We have forests on the east side. And we actively manage our forests. And biomass is a byproduct of forest management. So wherever we have forests that are being actively managed, we have a certain amount of biomass. And as a part of our stewardship ethic within Oregon, we want to take advantage of that material. You know, we don't want to view that material as a, as a waste product. We want to view that material as an asset that we can turn into something that's going to create jobs and create energy. Throughout Oregon, private sector companies are working with communities and government agencies to explore new ways to use woody biomass to benefit forest health and create jobs. Ochico Lumber's venture into biomass was about survival. The company in Central Oregon had milled ponderosa pine into boards since the 1930s. The mill provided a livelihood for generations of rural Oregonians. In the late 20th century, as logging on federal land virtually ended, dozens of mills in Central and Eastern Oregon closed. Well, there's been a number of changes in, in, in attitudes regarding the management of our national forests. Uh, the cultural, social changes of maintaining more old growth timber versus what we had in the past have made us look at the future of our business and our business model and said we better change with what is available in the forest and at the same time uh, utilize our existing workforce, utilize the people in the community that have the skill levels to come in and harvest a different type of tree than we have in the past. Here in Eastern Oregon, we have a forest health issue that is growing. We can be part of the solution with a biomass industry. In order for us to build this facility, we needed to know that there was raw materials available, that the thinning projects and the stewardship contracts were going to be available in order for us to put some of our equity into these projects. In the past, when this type of material was not utilized, it was put in large slash piles and burned in the woods. Now we can convert this material into biomass where we can use it to create energy. Well, we're really excited about biomass, woody biomass in Grant County. We've been at this for a year. It, did t it was challenging to get the job done. You have to put uh, quite a bit of work into it and you gotta be creative on putting a package together to make it work. You gotta use the Oregon Department of Energy resources. You need to use uh, you know, creative financing to get it done through uh, federal tax credits, those type of things. But we were able to put it all together as well as three others in our county 
um, to make this work locally, and we're really excited about that. The project in John Day has been successful because of an abundant source of nearby woody biomass and because other heating fuels are more expensive. But it wouldn't have worked just anywhere. Biomass energy projects need to be tailored to the local forest conditions. The Jones family, which owns the Seneca Sawmill and about 165,000 acres of timberland, recognized a changing market for lumber. The impetus for the construction of this facility really started with our need to dry a larger percent of our lumber. And we thought, what better way, given the business that we're in, uh, to use a renewable resource such as woody biomass. Our raw material comes both from our sawmill manufacturing the facilities in the form of sawdust, shavings, and bark, and also in the form of forest biomass, which is uh, the residual product left, left over from harvesting uh, in, in the woods. Uh, we now have the capability with the renewable energy facility to bring in the treetops, the limbs and such uh, that was tradi traditionally left in the woods to be burnt. We now bring it in in a ground form and we use it in, in our cogeneration facility for renewable power. So virtually 100% of the tree is now utilized on site. Uh, it helps us utilize 100% of the resource in the woods as well. Now the plant produces enough heat and steam to dry its lumber and generate the electricity to sell enough power to the Eugene Water and Electric Board to power 15,000 homes annually. More than a third of Oregon's energy consumption is for transportation. Most of that is gasoline and diesel fuel. Can woody biomass help here? A company called Ziachem is pursuing this possibility. The business was founded in 2002 by two chemists who had worked together at a startup R&D company. They developed a method of making ethanol fuel from plant matter and found an excellent raw material in hybrid poplar, a fast-growing tree that is routinely farmed for paper and lumber. The advantage to using cellulosic ethanol as a replacement for petroleum fuel is that the feedstocks that we are utilizing are located here locally. For Ziachem, we are accessing woody biomass from Greenwood Resources, which is just about five to ten miles away from our biorefinery site here, and that allows us to displace imported petroleum. While there are still economic and technological hurdles to overcome, wood-based biofuels show promise as an alternative to petroleum. A common thread of public partnership and collaboration runs through these stories. Each project got off the ground in part with government help and community support. It is our belief when you build and manufacture uh, heat sources through biomass that the best way to approach this is to look at biofuels as a community-based alternative to other types of energy creation. Using biomass provides so many positive things for Oregon. Removal of some biomass can help unhealthy forests on Oregon's east side, a major objective for our state. It can provide high quality jobs in hard hit rural communities. And it can provide Oregon another source of renewable energy and locally obtained heat and liquid fuel to power our state.